Hello, BMFox here. A lot of viewers have asked me to make a unit tier list. A lot of YouTubers have tried before and all have failed. Because you need to make a distinction for every doctrine. You cannot rate all these units if you don't take in regard their doctrine unit bonuses. And so let's have a deeper dive in this video for the best units for the allies doctrine. First I'm gonna explain the tiers. The S is overpowered. You can build these types of units to get an edge over your enemy. Tier A units are are powerful and useful in almost all situations and no army should miss out on them. Tier B are very strong and useful units. Tier C can be a solid choice but have downsides. D have some niche units and tier F are completely useless. Let's start with the infantry branch Militia. I'm gonna rank them as C. They can be a solid choice but have downsides. In of the recent updates their stealth has been reduced. They're no longer stealth in the mountains, they're only stealth in the forest hill and cities. They are cheap, they have good stats for their price, they're very slow, but they have good defensive stats. Then we've got our infantry, which I'm gonna rank a B. They're very good units, especially in the start of the game. Depending on the map type, you started with about 15 of those. They have very good stats in defense. They've got good terrain bonuses both in the forest and in the cities. And their speed and offensive character makes them perfect to stack them with artillery units to protect them. Then we have got a moderate infantry for allies they can have some niche uses they're one of the fastest units in call of war so if you want to move fast and speed is what you want and you've got a lot of spare food then later in the game moderized infantry could be used to grab some provinces fast however for the allies doctrine their research is later available with one or two days depending on the day for this reason a mechanized infantry is much better for the allies doctrine the allies produce them 10% cheaper and their mechanized infantry gets 10% additional hit points. Mechanized infantry has a very good stats versus unarmored units and can also hold their own against light armored and even heavy armored targets. They have an excellent anti-air defense and I'd argue that mechanized infantry for allies is one of their best units. They cost a lot of food, they cost a lot of manpower but in the late game this is a unit you really want to have. Next up are commandos which I'm also going to rank on the the A tier list. Commandos have excellent stats versus light armor than unarmored targets, can also hold their own against heavy armor and deal decent damage in anti-air defense. And for allies, commandos deal 15% more damage versus unarmored units and they move 15% faster so even with a 10% speed reduction of allies they're still 5% faster than axis or cometarian doctrine. This is an excellent unit for the allies doctrine. On top of it, they ignore or fortifications and they are stealth in all terrain types. This unit really is a must have and can change the course of battle. And finally in the barracks unit branch we have got paratroopers. They have some niche uses but personally I never use them because once they have landed they need to mobilize six hours and that really is a killer. During those six hours of mobilization time the rear are sitting ducks and can easily be countered by ranged units or tactical ones especially now that you can spawn units with unit cards or with war bonds paratroopers can be countered very easily so they're either completely useless or they have some niche uses and the only use that I can see for them is if you can assault the capital or if you could take out a nuclear reactor then they could be really useful another niche use would be that you can use them as regular infantry that can move very fast as they can fly from airbase to airbase that can actually be quite useful but it really depends on a case-to-case -case basis. Allies paratroopers are 15% cheaper and get 10% extra hit points. It's up to you to decide whether you see utility for them or not. Alright time for the tank range now. Armored cars are a unit that you should use in almost all situations. Due to their scouting ability you should always at least have one of those in all the stacks that you use. They are very fast and they are pretty overpowered in the early game especially as they counter unarmored units and there's a lot of unarmored units in the game. However allies armored cars they don't get any doctrine bonuses 
so I'm going to put them in the tier B. They are very strong and useful units, but as they don't get doctrine bonuses and are slow compared to two other doctrines, I cannot give them an A star rating. Same counts for light tanks. Light tanks are good in almost all situations, they're very strong and useful units. In the early game, they counter an armored car spam, which is pretty good. They're one of the fastest units in Call of War. They counter light armor targets, so later in the game, you can also use them to counter self-propelled stacks like uh, SP anti-air, SP rocket artillery, SP artillery and those kinds of units and you can also use them to grab territory very fast however they are a bit weaker for allies doctrine as they don't get any bonuses and their research is available one to two days later compared to other doctrines. Allies medium tanks can be a solid choice but they have downsides their research is one to two days later compared to other doctrines they don't get any bonuses they're slow. Allies Doctrine in general has a weak tank branch so you shouldn't use medium tanks with Allies Doctrine however medium tanks in general are a good unit so you could get away with it. I'm gonna rank the heavy tank also with a C. Allies Doctrine heavy tanks they don't get any bonuses but they don't get any nerfs as well however heavy tanks are slow especially Allies Doctrine as they're 10% slower in general. You could produce heavy tanks as allies but personally I wouldn't do it. Then we have got the last unit in the tank branch for allies which is the tank destroyer. As allies tank destroyers are 15% faster so even with their ally speed reduction they're still five percent faster than those of axis and comitern especially as axis and comitern tend to go heavy on the heavy armor tank destroyer is perfect to counter heavy tanks and medium tanks from axis and comitern also their research is sooner available and you get a 15 percent production reduction tank destroyers are absolutely a must-have for allies doctrine i cannot enough emphasize on this. Right now the Ordnance branch of allies is weak in general, there's almost no unit bonuses whatsoever. Anti-air is a solid choice but they also have downsides, they're very slow especially for allies. However they're kind of a necessary evil because you need them to protect your artillery stacks. You should also use them to protect your airfields but apart from that I see little utility in them because they're so slow. Same counts for the anti-tank, you've got the same speed as anti-air they should be used to protect your artillery stacks. You can also use them to protect your cities. They are stealth both in cities and forests so that's really good and due to their stealth capability I would actually put them on the B rating as they are better than anti-air but remember anti-tank is still pretty slow so you should be used as a static defense and if you want to use it on the offensive you should only use it in artillery stacks. Then you have got artillery. I'm gonna put it on a C rating. Why? Because artillery counters heavy armor. A lot of players make the mistake of making artillery on day one with allies which is a huge mistake because they cost a lot of goods and you're gonna need those goods to produce tactical bombers, armored cars, light tanks. You cannot afford artillery in the early game. They only counter heavy armor. There's no heavy armor in the early game because heavy armor are notably medium tanks, heavy tanks, tank destroyers and railroad guns. Artillery have little utility in the early game and on top of it they get no unit bonuses for the allies doctrine and if you got an sp rocket artillery i would put them on the c rating just like artillery just because they only counter heavy armor there's only four heavy armor unit types in the game so they actually don't have a lot of targets allies sp artillery gets an additional 15 percent damage versus heavy armor 10 percent additional hit points and their research is sooner available and this is the only reason why I give them a C rating. If you wouldn't have had these doctrine bonuses I would have put them in D. Then finally in the Ordnance branch we have SP anti-air. Just like anti-air they're a necessary evil you need them to protect your ground units and you should use them to protect your tank destroyers, light tank, armored cars. However they're gonna slow down your armored cars or your light tanks but that is how it is. If you have air dominance you can choose not to use them. However SP anti-air they're gonna protect your units 20 
24-7. In the air tab, interceptors are absolutely necessary to protect your airspace and your bombers. Allies interceptors get their research upgrades one or two days earlier compared to other doctrines. However, they don't get any other bonuses, for which reason Axis and Pan-Asian interceptors are better, so I cannot give them an A-star rating. The tactical bombers of Allies doctrine, they get an additional 15% extra damage bonus versus light armor targets. Their range is increased with 15% and their research and upgrades are one or two days sooner available, which makes the tactical bomber for the Allies doctrine one of their best units. Allies attack bombers they don't get any doctrine bonuses. They mainly counter heavy armor targets, of which again there's only four types of them in the game. They counter tank destroyers, medium tank, heavy tank and railroad guns. But as these uh, tank units they have a lot of HP, it takes level 1 attack bombers a long time to grind the HP down. So I wouldn't really recommend to use them but they're a good unit. If you have an enemy that produces a lot of heavy tanks and medium tanks in the late game then having level 3 attack bombers could be very useful. Allied strategical bombers are one of the best in the game. They get an additional 15% range and they get 15% extra hit points so they're pretty difficult to take out. With allies strategical bombers you can send the economy of your enemy back to the stone age. Allies naval bombers don't get any unit bonuses but they are really 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 good to protect your coastline. They are the most efficient unit to counter enemy convoys and to keep your coastline and your sea safe and this is unit you should always have. In the naval tab allies submarines are weak because their research upgrades are one to two days later available compared to other doctrines. They are also the slowest submarines in the game but still they're pretty useful to protect your coast so you should use them. They're just less effective than other doctrines. Allies destroyers they deal 15% extra damage versus submarines and they've got a 15% additional speed and their research upgrades are available one to two days earlier compared to other doctrines which makes the allies destroyer a good counter for the axis submarines and you should always have them if you go navy however due to their speed naval bombers are simply more efficient to hunt subs than destroyers but you should always have destroyers to protect your surface fleet cruisers are good units in general but for the allies they don't get any doctrine bonuses same counts for battleships both units they are the slowest in the game so if you're up against the more powerful enemy there's no option to shoot and scoot or to escape and anyway having a surface fleet is a black hole for resources navy doesn't conquer provinces for allies you should only use a surface fleet to escort your units if you want to launch a big scale invasion and if you want to launch a big scale invasion you're also gonna need aircraft carriers and the only reason i rank them as a c rating is because for the allies their research is one to two days sooner available which enables enables you to put more planes on your carriers compared to other doctrines and if you go heavy on the air tab with your tactical bombers interceptors and naval bombers and you want to invade then it would be useful to be able to take those planes with you on your aircraft carriers then finally we have got the secret bench rocket artillery are absolutely a very good unit for the allies doctrine they're faster than regular artillery they counter unarmored units which is perfect for the early game and you can upgrade them throughout the game which is just perfect same counts for sp rocket artillery also these don't get a allies doctrine unit bonus but just like rocket artillery they counter all unarmored targets they have very good stats versus light armor as well so that's almost all of the call of war ground units can be countered with these units and because they're fast they are perfect to be stacked together with light tanks and armored cars and you can take which is very useful because allies is a slow doctrine you can take out single runners and smaller stacks with your tactical bombers and any organized resistance of bigger stacks that you meet you can take care of them with your rocket artillery or sp rocket artillery allies have the worst railroad guns in the game obviously they have less hp than the axis they have less range they are slower than the other doctrines as well they are no match for axis railroad guns or for pan asian railroad guns however you can produce them 30 percent faster than any doctrine so in certain types of situations they can still enable you to gain dominance but railroad guns 
shouldn't be your main strategy for allies doctrine. Flying bombs are absolutely a waste of resources. They are weak, they can get shot down, they have little use. You simply shouldn't produce those. I would give rockets the same treatment, however those cannot be shot down, they have better stats, they can be good to take out air bases, but I only would use them if you have the possibility to ground the enemy air force so that you can take them out with your tactical bombers. That's the only use I see for rockets because rockets they cannot attack units that are moving they can only attack static targets and to be honest rockets are not designed to take out units but only buildings. I often see players using rockets against moving units that's just stupid. Then we have rocket fighters. Rocket fighters are a very strong unit for any type of doctrine. If you risk losing air dominance against other players you produce rocket fighters you're gonna be good just please note that they have a small range and you cannot put them on aircraft carriers as allies doctrine they don't get any additional bonuses so i cannot put them in the overpowered rank which obviously i would have done but that would only count for the axis or Pan-Asian rocket fighters. And then finally we get to the atomic warfare. Allies unlock the atomic bomber two days earlier than any other doctrine. And for this reason, I'm gonna give them a C rating. However, they can easily get shot down by interceptors or by anti-air. So if you use them, you should wait until the enemy is close to province center and attack the province center instead. In this way, the anti-air will not defend. Atomic bombers take a lot of time to research. They're expensive to produce use takes a long time so if you go for atomic bombers your other research will suffer however now with war bonds it comes a more viable strategy however the allies nuclear bomber gets an additional range of 15 percent and they get 15 percent hit points so where for other doctrines i would give the atomic bomber a d rating i might actually put them in b for allies and then finally we have nuclear rockets also nuclear rockets are two days sooner available for allies they deal a ton of damage they cannot be shot down they're simply overpowered and as you get these units two days sooner than any other doctrine it is really overpowered and in these two days you're gonna be able to take out any big stacks from the enemy and turn the tide of the war into your favor so to recapitulate completely overpowered atomic rockets which gives you an edge on your opponents tier a units powerful and useful in almost all situations and no army should miss out on them mechanized infantry commandos tank destroyers tactical bomber strategical bomber and rocket fighter tier b very strong and useful units infantry armored cars a light tank anti-tank sp anti-air interceptor naval bomber rocket artillery destroyer sp rocket artillery and strategical bombers tier c can be solid choice but has downsides militia medium tanks heavy tanks anti-air artillery sp artillery attack bombers submarines and aircraft carriers d rating has some niche uses a motorized infantry pirate troopers cruisers battleships railroad guns and rockets f rating completely useless flying bomb this was it please let me know if you agree with my rating and don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel thanks a lot i hope you have enjoyed this video please subscribe and hit that bell button for notifications i want to say a warm thank you to my members and elite members for supporting this channel